Hello everyone. So this is day four of the Tiny Feet Big Steps Conference. And I have yet another amazing guest with me, who's a speaker here, Dr. Phil Fisher. Hi. Hi, Bosu. How are you doing? Doing great. Great place. Yes, it is amazing. Beautiful weather today. So yeah, please tell us a bit about yourself and your background. And also if, you, if it's your first time here at the conference. Yeah. I'm an academic general pediatrician based at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota in the United States. But I've worked in the past in other countries. Most recently was in the Middle East. Spent time working in Africa a few decades ago when I was newer to pediat. And I've stayed in touch with friends and colleagues and been involved in projects in a lot of different countries. This is the first time, though, that I've been able to be at this conference. Oh. Um, so it's very exciting to see the enthusiasm, the vigor, and the exciting things that are coming out of this group. Okay, and how did you get to know about this conference? So I met Steve Swanson before he ever came to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. He was a pediatric infectious disease doctor in Minneapolis, about an hour and a half drive from where I live in Rochester, Minnesota. We're both involved in global health. We shared in some conferences and some educational sessions together. He came this way and we've stayed in touch. I was at a meeting in Greece in April of this year and had a good time. He was there as well. Had a good time talking with him, hearing about what's going on in the hospital here and about the conference. And I figured, that's great. I'd like to see this conference. Um, so it's been fun to be able to be here. And of course, Steve Swanson does more than just pediatric infectious disease, and he's become a good neonatologist too. That is true. It sounds like the power of network like brought you here, just how really powerful it is, yeah. truly. And what have you been up to here at the conference? So you mentioned networking, and I think that's the key of this conference. This conference feels like a family, people that share a goal of helping babies, but they're having fun together. People yeah. were dancing last night. I, anyway, people were dancing. They're, they're people sharing life and having fun, bringing their experiences and their ideas. So what I've been involved with here mostly is just hanging out and enjoying people. <laughs> Officially, I'm leading some educational sessions, but most of it has just been sharing in that family, community, networking of people getting together and then getting excited about making some changes where they're living. Yeah. Could you tell us more about yay fun, always up for fun, but... Could you tell us more about the educational bits that you've been involved in first? Education is really fun, too. <laughs> True. We all like to learn. We like to use our minds to grow and to be useful in society. Yes. Uh, so I've been teaching a session about clinical research. It's an introduction to clinical research for people that are dealing with babies. Mm -hmm. This conference is set up to be very practical. So there's science, there's education about knowledge being shared. But most of the conference is to implement that knowledge in hands-on, tangible ways for babies. So the session I'm leading is a little bit different because it's not just about take known knowledge and apply it in a setting where somebody's working, but it's about getting new knowledge. So as we've talked about doing clinical research, I've shared some stories from my life, but basically working with children, I would see things that I didn't understand or I would know things from the books that didn't seem to fit with what the patients were telling me and doing, and it raised questions in my mind. Mm -hmm. Getting answers to those questions is what research is all about. So as a group here in our sessions, we've been talking about how to take clinical questions, experiences, even tragic things when patients don't do well, mm -hmm. and how to turn that into a question that can be answered so we learn something, that's research, and then can spread with the knowledge of what we've learned so other people can help other patients in different settings. Hmm. That's interesting. Could you give us an example of when you think, almost a most recent example when that happened to you, a question that you had that you turned into research and you linked with research as in low middle income countries? So let me, I'll answer a different question. I'll change it a little bit. I'll use one of the examples that I've been talking about in this session that we do, yeah. and it's 40 years old. So okay. it's not a recent example, okay. but when you're old, you can be there. Okay. You won't find that out for a long time. So when I first got to work in Democratic Republic of Congo 40 years ago, uh, it was called Zaire at the time, mm -hmm. and I knew a lot of good American medical science. I had some experience caring for sick children, and I would see newborns with a fever. To a pediatrician, that says, oh, the baby has a fever. This could be a serious bacterial infection. We need to do these tests. We need to do these antibiotics. And maybe it's just a minor thing, but we need to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. So the nurses where I got to and was working had more experience than I did. And they said, oh, this baby had a fever, but we gave malaria medicine, and now the baby's better. 
and I was happy the baby was better, but I felt really scared that the nurses hadn't treated the thing that could kill the child because at that time, everybody knew that babies don't get sick from malaria. They have to wait their 10 days until the mosquito bite has led to something. And the nurses kind of smiled and nodded, and they weren't convinced. So we had this difference of opinion. So the question was, are the nurses right or was my American knowledge right? We turned it into a research question of what is the incidence and the impact of congenital malaria? At the time, people didn't think congenital, being born with malaria, happened. They didn't think it could come from the mother's blood. It could only come from a mosquito bite. But we did a research study. We turned that clinical question into a research question. And then we looked at about 300 consecutive newborns. We tested the mother, the placental blood, and the baby's cord, umbilical cord blood, and then baby's peripheral blood. And we looked to see how much malaria there was. I shouldn't have been surprised, but the nurses were right, and I was wrong, and all the textbooks were wrong. Uh, about 13% of newborn babies had malaria at the time of birth, had infection. But some of them got better. They washed out the infection. They fought it off. They never even got sick. But if they had malaria, they were more likely to get a fever. And if they had malaria infection, they were more likely to die in the first three days of life. So causing fever and causing death with about... 13% of the babies infected. That is not what the book said. The book said it's exceedingly rare. This was not rare. So that was research. And now if we look back in the last 35 years, that was part of people realizing, wow, maybe things aren't what we thought. Maybe congenital malaria is a big deal. So since then, there's been much more attention paid to mother's malaria during pregnancy and to the babies. And now things are taken care of in a very different and a much better way. So that was an example of something where I thought I knew something. It was wrong. I wasn't alone. The textbooks were wrong, too. We looked at patients. We learned from patients in doing research, and we found out something that could help kids all over the world. I like that. I like that it's older than me as well, that story. So it's a good one. I like, I like that you went back into the archives and thought of something that would be useful to tell. So thank you for sharing. That. After we did that study, I thought, okay, maybe Zaire, Democratic Republic of Congo, is different. Maybe yeah. this isn't right. So I wrote to seven friends in different countries around Africa, including somebody in the country you came from and were born <laughs> later on. And I said to these friends, hey, can you test the 100 next babies you see and see if they have malaria? And it was variable, but overall an average of 7% of kids were born with malaria. Anyway, so it wasn't just from where we were, but we realized this was affecting your family and yes. your, your ancestors as well. So I started with the problem in Zaire. You wonder, hmm, is there something exactly. here? And then... It goes, spreads all over Africa. And in fact, the problem was already there. We just opened our eyes to the problem and then we could see what was really going on. So it's about asking the right questions and just looking at going in with a microscope to say, how can we unearth what needs to be unearthed? And doing it with a team. Yes. It's not just a doctor or a researcher. It was a nurse. It was our nursing students that did the study, the parents, the patients. It was everybody working together and people in different places. Yes, you mentioned that the nurses were like, hmm, this baby needs malaria. And you had to be like, no, there's something here. Teamwork really does make yeah. research work. And that's what this conference exemplifies. This is networking community teamwork. I've talked to somebody this afternoon who said, I want to check something out. And they're leaving this conference with ideas to implement, either to improve care or to learn something new to improve care later. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm sure people will be inspired in their own settings to answer the right questions. Um, next is, you got involved through networking. How else do you think people could get involved in this conference? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a great opportunity. Most of the people that get involved are taking care of babies, newborns, and want to do a better job of it. So they'll learn They'll get skills and they'll be able to do that. So there are a lot of people that would want that, but it's designed to be practical and to be relevant to whatever we call less rich countries, lower yeah. middle income countries. So if somebody cares about caring for babies in lower middle income countries, I think you just contact the course organizers, the conference organizers and say, hey, can I go? Uh, we've got, what, people from 29 different countries here yeah. this year. It's grown quickly. Um, and I think people can come and get involved. Some might think, oh, I know everything. I'll go teach. And maybe they could come teach and then they'll come and find like what I found in Zaire. <laughs> well, I need to learn more here. Definitely. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So as a first time speaker here at this conference and just you networking and understanding what the conference is about, what would you want this conference to be in the future? Like your hopes for this conference? 
That's a challenge uh, because I want it to stay small enough that people can network and yes. connect and be a family, be a community together, and then go out from there. But I love this so much that I want other people to come. We just told everybody to get involved. So how can we do that and be small? That I think will be a challenge. But I think for the future, we need to be able to keep the value we have now of a practical, tangible conference of education that can help babies in a family setting. We need to keep that and yet let more people get involved. We've got room for a big family. We can make it a bigger family. and Maybe there'll be sub-families even. So I think we need to grow, but we need to keep the current strengths of what the conference is. Love that. And thank you so much for chatting with Rosie, me. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you these last few days and now. All right. Thank you. Yay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yay. Her. <laughs>